Uber CEO ti says time to forgive the Saudis for murdering that journalist. This seems like it seems like too ridiculous for anybody to say. So people might think this is being taken out of context. But let's actually listen to the video so you can see that it wasn't taken out of context. I hope the audio works. Hold on. I uh, want to ask you uh, about Saudi Arabia. Uh, last year, you chose not to go to the big Saudi Arabian government's investment conference uh, after the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. And you said that you wanted to wait for more facts to emerge. Uh, we're now at a point subsequent to that. The CIA has assessed that the Saudi government, including the crown prince, had a role in that murder. You also decided not to go this year. Did you not go this year because of the Khashoggi situation? We had a board meeting at the same time. Well, that's convenient, but you're the CEO. You probably could have rescheduled we that. We scheduled board meetings years and years ahead. It wasn't... Uh, would yeah. you, if your board meeting had not been that day, would you have gone? I don't know if I would have. You also, Saudi Arabia is your fifth largest shareholder. You have uh, the head of the Sovereign Wealth Fund on your board. Do you believe he should stand for re-election to the board? I think he's been a very constructive board member, Yasser has. Uh, and I personally have valued his input greatly. Uh, it's up to him whether he wants to stand for re-election. But, well, but from your opinion, he represents and works for a government which you believe had a role in the murder of a journalist who was a U.S. resident. Should that person be on the board of a U.S. company? I think that government uh, said that they made a mistake. Well, they um, made a mistake and then somebody's well, dead. Listen, it's, it's, it, it's a serious mistake. We've made mistakes too, right, with self-driving uh, and we stopped driving and we're recovering from that mistake. So I think that... People make mistakes. It doesn't mean that they can never be forgiven. I think they've taken it seriously. And the, CIA, from my the, standpoint, the CIA didn't suggest that they made a mistake and that it was an oversight. Like with self-driving, that was a, basically a bad censor, correct? This yes. was, the CIA yeah. suggested that the crown prince had a role in ordering an assassination. It's a different thing. You guys didn't intentionally didn't, run somebody over. I didn't read that part of the CIA report. You're, you're obviously deeper in it. But I think from a Saudi perspective, they're just like any other shareholder, right? It's we, now we're a public company. Anyone can invest in our company if they choose to do so. And they're a big investor, just like you could be a big investor as well. I don't think I can be as big as the Saudis. <laughs> I don't That'll think. That'll be hard. That'll be tough. Hey, everybody. Everybody just mistakes, makes mistakes, guys. Everybody just makes, makes mistakes. We, you, know, you know, we made some mistakes with our company. They killed people. This is so insane. How is this guy a CEO? Like, oh, I haven't read the report. It's your fifth biggest shareholder. Maybe you should read reports like that. Isn't that important for you to know as the CEO of the company? You know what gets me though? What gets me? Like a lot of people are now like looking at this news. They're like, oh, this guy is so horrible. And because of Kushikji, you know, Saudi Arabia should be, you know, boycotted and we shouldn't be using Uber, which is all oh, makes sense to me. But, you know, you know, the boycotting Saudi Arabia should have been a thing way before Kushikji. Because, it's, you know what, Kushikji, like all these people, you know, I, I wish it was this easy. I wish like people could be like, okay, we're going to stop using Uber. Because we know it's the fifth largest shareholder. We don't want to have blood on our hands. Because, we, hey, guess what? When you use Uber now, you have to realize that when you're using Uber, you're helping Saudi Arabia. You're helping executing of execution of gay people and atheists and ex-Muslims and people that have been accused of witchcraft. You're helping that. You have to know that you're helping that. Like, if you have any... If you want to be moral, you, you don't have to, you could just switch to Lyft or something like that. But, you know, you, I could ask for boy, these things, you know, but we don't have that much of reach and people don't give a shit. And people, even the people that do give a shit, they only give a shit when a, when a U, U.S. resident like Khashoggi gets killed. Where was all this, like, outrage when gay, Saudi gay people were being executed? Because, you know, Saudi gay people don't, don't matter, apparently. It's only when a U.S. resident die. Again, it's better than nothing that now that people are caring. But let's read this article. Let's see what, what it says. On Sunday, Axios on HBO aired an interview held with the Uber CEO, uh, Dara Khosrowashni. Hors that sounds like a very Persian name for some reason. Khosrow something. 
Um, okay, which touched on everything from the company's lack of profitability. Good. You know what? Good. I want everything that the Saudis invest in to crash. I want this whole Vision 2030 thing to of the Saudis. I want this whole goal of the Saudis that they have to diversify their economy outside of oil. I want all of that to fail. I want this whole plan that the Saudis have to get more tourism to Saudi Arabia has to fail. And if you're going to Saudi Arabia as a tourist, then you know what? Fuck you. You know, you have blood on your hand. You know, any if especially especially the companies that are that invest are investing in Saudi Arabia, if any of them ever had the gay flag, any of their in their logo, and they celebrated Pride, and now they're investing in Saudi Arabia. If you're not spending time, if you're an activist, not calling out their hypocrisy. If you're a gay rights activist, especially, and not going after these companies that that are investing in Saudi Arabia, then fuck you as well. If you're more worried about la language policing online and what people use, what, you know, what pronouns and stuff, if you're worried about that, but not worried about your fellow gay rights activists or trans rights activists in Saudi Arabia or other Middle Eastern countries, then you really don't have your priorities right, okay? Anyways, Saudis are really bad at investing, which is good. They have shitload of money that they get out of ground, but they don't, but they they put it in places where it fails miserably and that's a good thing and i hope i hope uber fails as well okay i hope everything that the saudis invest in fails okay i hope their economy crashes okay i really do i hope their vision because tr they they are they use their economy not for their people they have been investing it on you know on spreading their disease all around the planet Okay, and especially they use it and oppressing their own people. Okay, so fuck the Saudi government, and I hope I hope left. You know, guys, if you're not an activist, you could just make a little bit of a difference by switching to something else other than Uber when it comes to your ride sharing. Okay, just do those little things. Don't you know? Call out the celebrities that you know. Who was it? This you know, um, it was I think Nicki Minaj that did a good job. She 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 she, uh, she was supposed to go to Saudi Arabia. She didn't because people are like, don't don't. You're bringing tourism to a country that shouldn't be. your your but what was the other group that did go to Saudi Arabia? BTS. You know, fuck them. You know, apparently money matters more than human rights. Anyways, let's go. Let's continue. Uh, so lack of profitability, really. I hope I now I know Uber's fifth largest investors is Saudi Arabia. I hope it fucking crashes, man. It's drive. I, I mean the stock value at least. It drivers pay. Okay, its drivers pay rate. Its failure to support drivers union, and a potential Elizabeth Warren presidency. Okay, naturally reporter Dan Premack also brought up the topic of slain journalist Jan Jamal Khashoggi, given that Saudi Arabia is the company's fifth largest shareholder and the head of the kingdom sovereign wealth fund sits on Uber's board. By the way, if you're an investor, if you invest in stocks, if you notice that Saudis have invested in something, given there's such a horrible track record of, of Saudis investing in technologies and things that crash and there's things that are not profitable and things that bubble, get your money out of there. Get your money out of the stocks that you, if you're if investing alongside with Saudis, that's a good sign that this is a fucking, by the way, it's a bubble, by the way, I, um, this might get me into legal trouble if I'm giving financial advice. I'm not a financial professional. Uh, do not invest based on anything I'm saying. Go seek financial. Go do your own research and uh, seek finance uh, professionals in, you know, finance or whatever to do. Like, don't. Nothing I'm saying is considered financial advice from a professional. I'm just saying that to make sure I'm not legally reliable for anybody investing in anything. Okay, so Saudi Arabia is the U.S. fifth largest company and the head of the Kingdom Sovereign Wealth Fund sits on Uber's board. Uh, Premack noted that according to the CIA, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman ordered Khashoggi's killing. Um, yep, should a person who works, which again, it's so sad that this one person, you know, Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, 
They killed so many people in Yemen. They starved children to death as a weapon, as a weapon of war in, 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 in Yemen. And apparently this one person's life is more, way more important. But again, it is important, but it, it's so sad that those other crimes didn't make people question Saudi Arabia's um, legitimacy. But this, you know, people's priorities, man, it's so, it's so everything is so fucked up. And anyway, should a person who works for a government that had a role in the murder of a U.S. resident be on the board of a U.S. company? Uh, Premack uh, wondered. Khosro Washani, the CEO answered, uh, answer may surprise you. Okay, so he said, I think that the government said that they made a mistake. Oh, so it's all good though. Like, oh, sorry, sorry, we killed this guy. We chopped him into pieces. Sorry, oopsie doopsie, oopsie, sorry, sorry, forgive us. We're okay now? Oh my, how could you, how, how is this guy a CEO? Aren't you supposed to be good at like, communication and like not embarrassing oh my god oh, okay uh, clearly astonished that this was the road the ceo of the pu of a public company was going to go down premac uh, interjected they made a mistake a person is dead yet incredibly the ceo was intent on digging himself yet deeper you know this is a moment that you realize like oh shit i made a misspoke let me let me Go back, but he doubled down. The CEO doubled down. It's a serious mistake, he said. We made mistakes too. Really? Really? Have you killed people? Have you killed people? Are you serious? Oh, we made mistakes too. With self-driving and we stopped driving and we're recovering from that mistake. Oh my God. Like, yeah, we, God, how did you not see? How, how did you not see that such a stupid thing? You know, how your CEOs, CEOs are supposed to be smart, aren't they? I think that people make mistakes. He continues saying, I, I think people make mistakes. Okay, I'm not going to read that. You saw that in the video. Anyways, I'm not going to read the rest of the article. The link is in the description, you know, description for you to see. I'm just going to read some of the comments. Um, or you could just pause here and read the rest of it if you want. Uh, let me see. This tweet... Okay, this tweet by Dara. Oh, so he, the CEO responded in a tweet, so correct himself. He's saying, there is no forgiving or forgetting what happened to Jamal Khashoggi. I was wrong to call it a mistake. As I told um, who the reporter after our interview, I said something in the moment I don't believe. Oh, really? You didn't believe that? You doubled down on it when he gave you the opportunity to correct yourself. Now that because of the pushback, and because of all the people pointing out how ridiculous that is, now you're correct. You're like, oh, you didn't believe. You, you repeated twice something that you didn't believe? What a stupid, what a dumb way to, to, you could have been like, I was wrong. I was wrong. It was dumb of me to believe that. But instead of saying it was dumb, it was a dumb view that I had. Now I have changed my views. Now you're saying that I said something that I didn't even believe. Who says things that they don't believe? Twice, even after they're given the opportunity to correct themselves. Is that really your excuse? I'm sorry, I wasn't clear. So yeah, you weren't clear. You you weren't so you were so not clear that you said something that was completely the opposite of what you believe in. Who does that? Who says things completely the opposite of what they believe in? Like, oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't clear. Oh, you weren't clear. So you said, you didn't say just misspoke a little bit that wasn't clear. You were so not clear that you said twice, you said something that was the opposite of what you believe in. That's your excuse? That's not an apology. That's the dumbest excuse I've ever seen. That makes it the whole thing even worse. Seriously, man, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you, seriously. If you hold over stocks, sell it if you have any decency or any... Seriously, people, like, stop stop using Uber. You know, it's not... I know these things are not going to make him... Boycott Saudi. Boycott Saudi. Boycott Saudi by not going to 
Saudi Arabia by shaming and bringing attention to any celebrities that is going there to perform by anybody going to if anybody is going there as tourists just like if they have pictures of themselves tell them that they have blood on their hand tell them that they are betraying LGBT rights b b by going to Saudi Arabia by spending money on them tell them that they're homophobes if you if you spend any time calling out people that use wrong pronouns spend some time on this spend some time on this go out and call out the people that are spending money on Saudi Arabia whether they whether they spend money on Uber or any other company that Saudi has is heavily invested in whether they own stocks or shares call your brokers ask them like hey I um my mutual fund you know do I own any mutual funds or any stocks that Saudi is is good for Saudi Arabia sell it sell it I don't want to I don't want to have blood on my hand right you know, if you if you see your favorite celebrity going to Saudi Arabia to perform, you use the hashtag boycott Saudi, something like that. They're like do something if you care about. You know, it shouldn't. You know, even the journalist of this of this. Uh, you know, I don't know where is this that they were, that they were interviewing the CEO. They're like, should we have? Um, oh, should we be supporting a government that kills a U.S. resident? Why does it have to be a U.S. resident for us to care? Isn't it supposed to be? Shouldn't we care about our fellow human beings, no matter where they are from? The fact that Saudi kill, beheads gay people shouldn't that be some a reason why we we we're, we're not supporting Saudi Arabia? Just shame people, call out people, call out people that are that are supporting Saudi Arabia in any way. Call those people homophobes because call like any company that support, support, pretends to support gay rights. Call them out like no fuck you. You are actively spending money. You are funding the killing of gay people. You are funding the killing of gay people. Tell them that. And you dare have a gay flag logo on on, on Pride? Fuck you. All right. Let's see what the what the top comments are. Dennis is saying, this is by the way, we posted this on Atheist Republic's Facebook page. Let's see what the top comments are. This, Dennis is saying, so Uber is now a political voice guiding us to forgive the murdering billionaires for murdering billionaires for our own sake, of course. Hmm. Paul is, this is a sat, uh, satire by Paul is saying, the Saudi government is Uber's fifth largest shareholder. So yeah. This checks out as a completely reasonable position on the topic. Yeah. Uh, so another person I can't pronounce their name is saying thanks for that. I needed a lift. Oh, this is the double meaning. I needed a lift because he's like switching to lift. Lift is basically Uber's competitor. By the way, can somebody let us know if Lyft has any Saudi shareholders? I'm hoping not, so that people could switch to Lyft without um, from Uber guys. So use Lyft so that you're not supporting Saudi. Do, 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 do they, can somebody let us know if Saudi Arabia has any shares in Lyft? I'm hoping not so that there's a good alternative for people. Instead of using Uber, they could switch to something that doesn't have, they could use without, without a guilty conscience, right? Um, it's time to delete. Okay, somebody else is saying it's time to delete the Uber app and boycott Uber. Now that is now that it is also one of one of uh, wealthy businesses starting to support a heinous crime, and the criminals. By the way, can you in the comment section please let us know some other companies that we need to be aware of, um, that we shouldn't be supporting, uh, because of you know Saudi investments. But also, let's not just do the steak. Let's also do the carrot. Like, like when Nicki Minaj or some other celebrities or any company decided to distance themselves from Saudi Arabia, let's congratulate them. Let's show them, like, look, there are some people that it's working. Because for for people like, oh yeah, this is not gonna work. What what's the point of like boycotting these companies? It's a, it doesn't make it doesn't make it that big of an impact. Well. Some celebrities decided not to go to Saudi Arabia because of the poor human rights record. Celebrate those celebrities. Oh wow, okay. Um, and you know, shine a light on them so that they could be a role model for other celebrities or other companies. Like if a company decided like, you know what? We're not gonna invest, you know, we're not gonna build uh, our franchises in Saudi Arabia but after hearing from you uh, because this is bad PR for us. Then like celebrate those companies. We're like, oh, I'm gonna use their product now or something. I know. 
just so that it works so other companies and other celebrities notice that it's working these things might work right when a celebrity doesn't go to saudi arabia it helps bring less tourism to saudi arabia so that this whole vision 2030 that saudi arabia has uh you know fails and you know that's a good thing if it fails because this is money that is being spent on oppression of people not just in saudi arabia but also in other countries including countries like yemen which, which is now i hope you notice and if you don't notice you don't you're not pay, you should be paying more attention saudi arabia among other countries like iran united states and you know some european countries but mostly saudi arabia is responsible for the greatest humanitarian crisis of our time in yemen in yemen this is the great like it can't it doesn't get any worse than this man it doesn't get any worse than this right this is you know when they say with after world war ii and stuff when they say oh never forget never forget you know when we forget we don't care we only look back in history like holy shit we should have paid more attention to that what happened in rwanda only after it happened people were like holy shit how do we miss that now it's happening in yemen if you're not hearing about yemen if you're hearing about other things in the world if you're if you're obsessed with trump tweets and you're not hearing about what's happening in yemen this is something that we're looking at uh, next generations are going to look back on and like holy fuck what, what was wrong with you how did you let what how did you not pay more attention about what was happening in yemen and you know who's responsible for it most than any anyone else muhammad bin salman saudi arabia okay so yeah it, you e e even if you're not an activist just do a little bit tweet about it post about it don't spend money on things that could support saudi arabia call out celebrities that are that are bringing tourism to saudi arabia just a tiny bit okay you don't have to go all out you know you could be you don't have to be it's not an all or nothing thing it's not binary it's not you know you yeah you might be doing a little bit but now you're you're part of a bigger movement okay Maybe somebody sees because of you, some because of your hashtag, somebody sees it and they post it as well. And then might somebody more important might see it and they might cover it. And maybe more news media will cover it. Do something. Share this video. There's a, there's an idea. Anyways, anyways, that's so annoying. This is so annoying. Fuck you. Fuck Uber. Fuck the CEO. And fuck anybody that knowingly is supporting anything that has anything to do with the government of Saudi Arabia.